Hey everybody, this is Garen Jen's journey. Today I'm going to take you out into the chicken coop and show you the renovations there. And then I'm going to take you out to the garden to show what we've done there. So come on along with me on my journey and let's see what progress we have made. All right, so that is our new chicken set up um, for our quarantine pen and where we bring out brand new chicks after they've gotten their feathers on them. Um, the coop has been doubled in size. My husband literally raised the roof on that. And uh, he rebuilt this enclosure so it's uh, more uniform and it's very well secured from um, predators and from chicks actually getting out. Um, it seems like every year that we raise chicks and put them out here, they're always finding a way to get out. Um, panic chicks especially will try to find a way to get out of um, their situation when they're panicking and so that's a lot of times how you find that we still have a hole in our fencing that we didn't know was there but anyway um how we got this all fixed um they're not out at the moment um so i'll show you what it looks like on the inside and see if we can actually get them to come out all right so this is what the coop looks on like on the inside you see it's quite quite spacious there's their food, their water. They have roosting poles up there. So it's a nice, nice space for them to grow. And then uh, as the doors open there, they can eventually go outside and explore their world out there. We're starting to get some chicks coming out to venture. Um, food is a major motivator. If you can sprinkle some some food on their plank to come out or whatever, they come out and eventually uh, get around and, and explore. Uh, we have 21 chicks in here, so yeah, if they all come out today, that's going to be awesome. Okay, so now we are in my container garden area. This is where I have various containers set up that my husband built for me out of pallets and uh, 55 gallon food grade drums that he cut in half lengthwise. Um, and I also have some big pots. Uh, I think there are 25 gallon pots um, that I have my potatoes planted in. So I'm gonna kind of show you what that's looking like right, right now. All right, so these are what I have my potatoes planted in. They're, uh, like I said, 25 gallon pots, and I have them covered to keep out my cats and my chickens from uh, digging up the soil and things like that. Once the plants get bigger, I can remove these covers because the, the animals won't get in, in them then. And I've also done this container bed. Um, I have two others I haven't even touched right now because it's still too cold to plant um, much uh, warm weather crops or anything it's uh we still get frost at night so um, yeah so the only thing that's planted right now is cold loving crops um, I have lettuces collards beets spinach swiss chard um, and radishes those are all planted in here so that's this part of the garden. I'm going to take it to the other one. So my chickens have been doing an excellent job of tilling up um, all the um, mulch and things like that, the top layer of it, and uh, um, mixing in some good fertilizer, if you know what I mean, and uh, just doing an excellent job eating uh, the grubs and bugs, uh, lots of pill bugs and things like that that are, that are starting to come out in the warmer weather. So that's been really, really good. Um, in about a month or so, I'm actually going to have to lock them out of my garden um, because it's going to be time to start planting the cold crops and um, the chickens will eat them because they love the veggies as much as we do. Um, so uh, yeah, for now they can free range all they want in my garden. It's a good thing. But in about a month, uh, we're going to have to put uh, the hammer down, so to speak, and get planting. And so we're going to have to put a lock down to keep the chickens out of the garden. So I'm going to show you what my garden's looking like right now with all the updates we've been doing. 
All right, there's lovely Autumn and her friend Tiny. <laughs> They're being gatekeepers today, but um, yeah, we I took down some of the pellet. I got more to take down. I just haven't uh, done it yet. I might do it today. The grapes that used to be on it and the rows have been moved. Uh, the climbing rose is now right there, attached to the fence, so it can actually grow. This is the kind. This is. Um, one that doesn't die back every year. Um, a lot of roses, they die back every year and uh, they grow new shoots and a lot don't. That's one that uh, doesn't die back, so to speak. It grows on, on last year's stems. So I've got it attached all the way up. So anyways, that's where that rose went and I'll show you where the grace went in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's really starting to uh, come together. A lot more things are really starting to come up and flourish. Like uh, my lilies are really starting to come up. Or excuse me, irises. Those are irises. Sometimes I get them mixed up because they look they look very similar when they pop out of the ground. But these are irises. And then uh, my sedum. I really like how sedum looks when it starts coming out. The little tight clusters of cactus looking uh, foliage. It's really, really neat. And then that's a new rose that I planted in. It's supposed to be a nice light lavender color. We'll see how that goes. Rhubarb's really starting to poke its head out. The daffodils too. And you can see um, this bed is empty now. I used to have all my containers in it for winter sowing, but I moved them because this bed's actually going to get turned uh, 90 degrees. <laughs> Um, this right now it's facing north and or excuse me east and west. It's supposed to face north and south. So I'm going to be uh, turning it 90 degrees. And then I have to tear all this down. Um, and I might have hubby put up a fence around just this, just to help keep it from flopping over. This is a bee balm plant. And it's really beautiful. Um, it gets right nice and tall and lush and just wonderful. But when it's so tall, especially because we get a lot of um, strong westerly winds because we're in open country, um, it gets blown all over the place. So if I um, contain it a little bit more as far as give it something to support the, the tall branches, it won't flop over so bad. So I might do that. It's kind of what we did with the tansy over there, that square container. Um, it again, it grows really, really, really tall and it falls over. So we built a containment unit, so to speak, to help keep the stems upright and not falling all over our garden paths. Say hello to Dilbert. Isn't he gorgeous? He's one of our... Uh, uh, roosters that was hatched last year him and his brother Henry um, and then he has a sister it's Lucille um, we tried hatching eggs last year um, and he's what we got uh, we got two roosters and a hen out of the four eggs we tried hatching not exactly good odds for uh, laying hens but uh, it is what it is and they get along with the other rooster so it works but anyways, um, Dilbert was strutting around in my medicinal bed. Um, a lot of stuff's really starting to come up. I've got yarrow coming up there. And the boys are going to talk all day. Um, uh, that's some um, variegated thyme. It's really, really pretty. Chives, whorehound. I got some more yarrow back there. Everywhere that has a flag um, is where my perennials are. Uh, my husband does landscaping and a lot of times um, they have surveyor uh, flags when they're going to dig something or work on something. So when they're done, my husband gets to pull all those out of the yard of his customers and then we use them around here to mark where plants like perennials are or things like that. So that's what I do every year is I go through and I make sure that all my perennials are marked um, in the fall so I know where they are when they're coming up in the spring. <clears throat> yes, Delbert, I see you. In here is my garlic. It is doing really, really well. You might not be able to see it. 
uh, because we have this up to keep the chickens and the cats out of it for now because they love digging and well the garlic can't be dug up so um, we left it there all right so this is where I've moved my new jugs to I have them along this trellis which is uh, the beds are completely done now after I uh, revamped them so they're all good to go so those jugs are there this trellis I need one more cattle panel and it will be done but the poles are already in place I just need the, the panel and then we have our other jugs here and then some more there and that's going to be those two beds that one and that one those are going to be where my uh, tomatoes are being planted this year um, so I feel, felt that that was a good place to put my jugs um, since most of them will be germinated and transplanted long before it's time to transplant the tomatoes so I used my grain and put them where they would be able to stay and just um, uh, grow and things like that I'm going to show you what some of these uh, jugs look like if you're new to what winter sowing is um, you plant your seeds in uh, water jugs, milk jugs, um, that sort of size plastic food grade jug. Um, tape them back up um, after you plant them and water them and all that good stuff. Um, and then set them outside. And when the temperature is right, uh, the seeds will germinate and they will grow inside those jugs. The jugs act kind of like a mini greenhouse, um, but they're also out here in the environment where you don't have the problem of hardening off your seeds um, like if you were to grow them inside. Uh, this is my fifth year of doing this and uh, I'll show you why I love doing that. So I'm going to take you over. These are my peas. They're going to actually be planted here on this trellis. So I'm going to show you what they're starting to look like. So you can see that they're starting to sprout. Looking really, really good. And I don't follow planting depth guidelines. When you're winter sowing, you don't want to follow the planting depth guidelines. Um, a lot of times I just sprinkle them on the top or push them just a little bit into the dirt, um, but not all the way. Uh, because if you think about how nature grows things, uh, she doesn't plant them deep. Um, a lot of times things just fall on the ground and they might get covered with a little bit of uh, organic matter from leaves or pine needles or things blowing around. Um, but in the spring, they come up. So that's how we do it here. We do it the, we try to do it uh, the way that nature does it, the best of our human capabilities. So I'll show you what my lettuces and collards look like. Those are really, really starting to go right now. And my kale, let's see. All right, so that's my kale. That's my collards, salad, Okay, so that was my lettuces and mustards and collards and kale. You see I very densely planted and I do that um, a lot. It works very well in these jugs. I can thin them some off later if I don't uh, want that many. But uh, usually when I go to transplant, I will take some of those and will eat them fresh as baby greens. So it works out very well that way. So I'm going to show you some of my flowers that are starting to grow because I do flowers too. Let's see. You got some that are starting to sprout there. Some that are sprouting there. Alright, so those are all the seeds that uh, have sprouted so far. We have more um, 
my sunflowers are starting to germinate um, and some other herbs are starting to germinate um, but that's the premises of the winter sowing is the seeds grow out here now as promised I'm going to show you where my grapes growing my son helped me transplant them because we had to carefully pull them out of the pallet fence that they were in and transplant them here. So I have three grapes and then we have them attached to the pallet and to the fence because I'm going to have the grapes grow along this top fence line here. It's going to be easier to maintain and uh, they'll stay up out of the way um, of chickens and things trying to eat them. So that is my garden update and my chicken update for right now. A lot of things are going on. Um, we've been on quarantine here for the coronavirus um, for uh, two weeks now. This is going on the second week of full lockdown quarantine. Um, but we've been home, most of us have been home uh, for about three weeks now, not going anywhere really. So we've been doing a lot of yard work, a lot of gardening. Um, my husband's rebuilding a trailer. Um, so yeah, we got all that going on, um, and the weather's just been gorgeous. We did have a couple days that were just eh, but um, all in all, it's been gorgeous to work with. So that is the journey so far. Um, I'll keep you updated as we progress down the journey. I just thank you so much for watching, and if you like to follow me on my journey, please hit the subscribe button, and then you'll keep updated on how the journey progresses. So until next time, everybody, I hope wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.